Welcome, Hudson Valley. This is Connor Walsh, host of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. This week on In Touch, we speak with Rachel Johnson and Kate Guinan from the Center for the Prevention of Child Abuse, CPCA for short. We'll be discussing their updates to their child sex trafficking initiative, along with their upcoming One Too Many 5K happening September 13th through 15th, and their event with Compassion Veterinary called Pause and Pours for Prevention at the Ben Morrow Winery on September 29th. We invite you to join us and listen to a previously recorded conversation between Rachel, Kate, and myself here on In Touch. I'm so proud to announce that In Touch has received another two excellence in broadcasting awards from the New York State Broadcasting Association for 2024. In Touch received the award for Outstanding Public Affairs Program or Series for the second year in a row. Not just that, but In Touch also received the award for Outstanding Editorial slash Commentary. This recognition would not be possible without all of our phenomenal guests that we learn from and grow with every single week. And of course, you the listener. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just found us, thank you for taking part in the conversation and staying in touch with what's going on in the Hudson Valley. Because of the awesome success of In Touch over the last year, we are expanding. We're launching a new spin-off series under the In Touch umbrella called Town Square Spotlight. These spotlights focus on amazing celebrities and leaders passing through the Hudson Valley who are making an impact in pop culture. You can check out our latest spotlights wherever you listen to In Touch. Hello, Hudson Valley. You're listening to another episode of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. We got a great episode for you guys today. I'm really excited about this one, especially when we have friendly faces who are returning. Really happy about this. And also, the return of a dog interview. Yes, uh, we have with us today members of the Center for the Prevention of Child Abuse. With us, we have Rachel Johnson, Senior Development Director, and Kate Guinan a marketing associate and pieces handler who's peace by the way peace is the dog that's with us hi peace <laughs> he's uh, chilling out there on he's the just floor. chilling <laughs> he's a good boy yes but rachel is. kate how are you guys oh great Very thank good. you for having us in absolutely glad to have you guys back in here it's been a while since we had you a little over a year yeah, has it been? I think it's been a little yes. over a year. It does not feel that long, though. No. <laughs> I feel like we just talked like maybe a couple of months ago or something, yeah. so it's weird. But um, I'm really happy to have you guys in here. You guys have a really big September coming up. A lot of great things that are happening, so might as well just get into it. For anybody who didn't listen to the previous episode with you guys or just unfamiliar with the CPCA, could one of you guys give an overview of what the organization does? Yeah, sure. Well, the mission is to prevent child abuse here in the Mid-Hudson Valley. So everything that we do, everything that we raise stays local. Um, We've been in existence for 50 years. We are right down the road um, from you guys. We have several prevention programs to prevent child abuse. We also have a crisis intervention, which is our child advocacy. Advocacy Center, which provides a safe, nurturing place for children to come into our building and share their story. Um, and many times it's uh, it may be abuse. And if so, we help get them on the path to safety and healing. And we have a full team there uh, ready to do that. Absolutely. It's a terrific organization. It's an unfortunate situation, of course, but to be an advocate for children in these situations, that's so important. And it's really, you know, it's like nobody at any age should be going through that, but children especially, that's really, really rough. So then where does peace fall into all of this then, our uh, friendly furry companion? Yeah, Yeah. he's like the, you know, he's our service dog, a therapy dog, and he's there to provide comfort to these children who come through. He also does, uh, he'll go out in the community and do different events like this. He loves nice. getting out and um, visiting folks in the community, so he'll do different events. But he's mainly working full-time in our building, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, um, there to greet children as they come in. Um, there, if uh, a child needs him through a forensic interview or a medical exam, going into a therapy session, whatever really they may need. And um, having him there really helps children let down their guard and uh, feel safe and begin telling their story. So um, we're lucky to have him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And sometimes he is he is trained and he has done this. Sometimes um, child victims will request that he accompany them into court. Wow. No, that's big. We're there prosecuting, um, you know, the offender. 
That's yeah, big that to be able to have. That actually happened um, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, big there case. was a child that presented her statement in court, and she wanted peace right there by her side. Wow. How did, how to go with peace by her side then? Oh, I think great. I mean, this person, you know, came in and this child would have him in while she was at the CPCA. So it was just a comforting thing to then have him in court with her. So it, it went great. Peace, yeah. was, peace was really this child's um, constant throughout mm. the entire case. So that's that's unbelievable. And that's really remarkable. And I'm glad that peace can be around for all these kids. And that's really nice. But on a more kind of lighthearted and comical (laughs) note, uh, as we were talking about right before we got on the mic, the way he lays down and just kind of (laughs) spreads out is hilarious. And Kate, you were just telling me before what people say when they see him sometimes. Could you talk about that here? Uh, Yeah, I mean, he just loves having people start, as soon as you start to pet him, he's like, oh yeah, this is it. He, He will like lay down and you can just lay there and pat his belly um he just he just loves all the love (laughs) that people will give him (laughs) he'll take it all and you're also saying people ask is like is he okay (laughs) oh yeah he that yes he definitely i mean he he's a happy pup but he has those eyes that just kind of look a little um, draws you in (laughs) yeah he definitely draws you in those true puppy dog eyes true puppy dog eyes and yeah and but he'll lay out on the ground and he's just enjoying himself but people will be like is your dog okay and it's like oh yeah this is just his demeanor he just loves it he lives up to his name his name is peace and he lives up to his name he was specially selected for us so you'll see right and i think in the times you've seen him he never jumps he never oh, barks no. and that's on purpose because we never want to um, child victims can sometimes be uh, especially uh, triggered or startled by those kinds of things so mm-hmm. he was specifically selected for us and his demeanor is just that it's it's peace he was selected yeah. by educated canines for people with disabilities and um yeah, we're lucky. He fits right in. So um, yeah, he loves these breaks. So he'll be with children. He'll be working hard. And, and they recommend that he takes these kinds of breaks in between that hard work and those forensic interviews. So what you're seeing now, he's just in total relaxation mode. <laughs> yeah, we, I love it. <laughs> yeah, we just completed the school year, you know, and, mm-hmm. and we go into the schools in Dutchess County. And we teach kids how to protect themselves against um, bullying, abuse, and trafficking. And this school year, um, we so proud. We were able to increase the number of students and children that we reach. Um, we ended this school year reaching close to 15,000 oh, wow. kids. Mm-hmm. And when you're reaching that many children... Mm-hmm your disclosures tend to go up. And we had close to 230 disclosures. And then some of those kids are going to then, um, depending on their circumstances and what they're disclosing, come through our building. Um, So he's, yeah, there's a lot of work there for peace. It's about 600 kids who come through our building every single year. Wow. That is kind of nuts to think about. And also, I think that's Interesting, of course, how the numbers go up after, you know, reaching out to all these kids. Mm -hmm. But one of the tragic things about this, when you're a kid, you don't always realize what's happening to you is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just the norm for you. Sure. And you don't think anything of it. But then when you come out and you talk and you say these things and have these presentations, it kind of opens their eyes. It's like, oh, should this not be happening to me when I go home after school and right. things along those lines? Totally. It's tragic, yeah. but it's true. And I'm sure that probably happens more often than not where it's kind of a light bulb moment where they yes. didn't even realize. Exactly. That, yeah. You hit it on the head because if we were to go in schools and say, are you being a victim of child <laughs> abuse? Right? They'd have no idea what that means. So yes, it is that moment where they're going, oh, maybe what's been happening to me is not right. Or... In many cases, maybe what's been happening to my friend Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is not. We see actually a lot of friends who come forward and say, this has been happening to my friend. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're not even in the same school district, but they're sharing, this was told to me. Now, what do I do with this information? Yeah. So, yeah, it is the first time for many of them that they're realizing, oh, wait a minute. This is um, not quite right. Yeah. Um, And we're giving them the tools and the resources to be able to deal with that. No, absolutely. It's it's weird. I'll share a 
quick story of my own. I've worked with a number of camps throughout the years. And one of the camps that I worked for, I remember at sign out, just having a random conversation and this kid divulged some really, really traumatic yeah. sounding stuff. But to him, it was just a Tuesday wow. afternoon. Mm-hmm. And he's just telling this while he's playing with his action figures. And I'm kind of sitting there like, uh, uh, uh y- y- you good, bud? <laughs> and I took it to my director. We followed up. And I don't know where things went from there. But I know that everything started, you know, going through the cycles what? of, you know, it was like there was some legit abuse going on. Yeah. But like to talk to this kid, it was just like, oh, yeah, this is my nightly routine. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I'm playing with my toys. And right. it was just heartbreaking. Right. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Right. The child didn't know. And that's interesting that you mentioned the um, little action figures that this child was playing with. Our therapist, our trauma therapist that's right in our building, you know, they'll often use play therapy as well um, with yeah. the kids. So, yeah. It's just a simple moment for the kid, but just right. like, wow. Wow, just so eye-opening. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. to be able to have this, I think and, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah and we go, we go to summer camps. You bring up another good point, yeah. summer camps. So, you know, we yeah. don't stop because school is out. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're presenting to summer camps all summer long. And um, I just got a call yesterday, actually, from one of them that says, oh, this is, you know, this is a circumstance. Is this something that we should report in? And we kind of talked through that. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it can happen anywhere. Yeah, um, it really can. We're, we, uh, we have lots of successes so and, and lots of reasons yeah. to smile. Yeah, and I mean, our curriculum also um, asks that we go into the schools twice within the school year. So sometimes a kid is almost absorbing the information on the first time that they co- that they are presented the information. And then by the second time that we come and present the second part of the curriculum, they're like, they're ready to come forward and, and share. And it's another reason why we also go into schools year after year, too, because it's not like one and done. And, you know, you got the information and (laughs) we move on from there. Each year they bring in a little bit more age appropriate information for that school year. So as they progress, then, you, you know, you get into the middle schools, which we're getting into now. You're talking about dating and all of that. So, um you know, each year you're learning a little bit more, but it's also giving opportunity to allow the child to register if what is happening to them is not right. Yeah. Wow. Seriously, I think that's really important where the more exposure that you have to something, the more receptive that you'll be to it. Uh, That's, you know, something that they always talk about when it comes to marketing and advertising, but it also really is something when it comes to therapy and expressing oneself the more opportunities that you have to express yourself Mm -hmm. the better chance that you will finally open up so i'm glad that you guys have that once earlier in the year and then once later the moment that you guys said that i'm over here is like yes that makes so much sense (laughs) terrific so no that's really awesome again you're listening to in touch town square media the hudson valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program we're speaking with kate and rachel from the cpca the center for the prevention of child abuse and we've been talking about a lot of how they go into schools and camps and how they spread this message and how they're able to reach out to a lot of kids in the community. Well, kids who had no idea that something might have been wrong, but because it was the norm to them and then able to swoop in and able to help out. I think that's terrific. Your programs are awesome, and I feel like we could just do an entire episode just talking about what you're doing. But we want to talk about what's going on in September. September is going to be a big month for you. As you said, you go into the schools. That's you know, Schools are going to be opening back up again, so you'll have all that. But you have two really awesome events, one in the uh, more middle of the month, the One Too Many 5K, and then later in the month, hosting it with Compassion Veterinary, Pause and Pours for Prevention at Ben Morrow Winery. Let's go in chronological order. Tell me about the One Too Many 5K. Yeah, well, this is a special year. Lots of fives. You know, peace turned five. Happy this birthday! Is, <laughs> right? This is our fifth annual one Too Many 5K on our 50th anniversary. So a real special uh, year for us. I remember the first one that was started during COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. The chair, actually, Philomena Finelli, who I know has been yes. a guest on here from Impact PR as well, really helped us during COVID 
get this one too many 5K started. And it was virtual then. Now we have some in-person events that are a part of it. And it's just grown. Now we're over 350 people. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. Kids, families, dogs. Um, We like to say 5K your way. Okay. Because it's really about promoting um, you know, getting your body moving, physical activity, quality family time, so people can hike it, bike it, run it, swim it. <laughs> we had somebody <laughs> dance it one year. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so um, all of that goes. And then, of course, we have our traditional avid runners who are keeping their time and their distance, and they're turning that in, and they want to know where they stack up in, in um, you know, the competition and prizes. So one too many 5K, the one too many standing for, even one child abused is one too many. Mm-hmm. You're right. It's in September. It's September 13th through the 15th. And um, our in-person events on the 14th, we have what we call Battle of the Badges. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we call it that because we have um, so many law enforcement, police, and firefighters and emergency personnel who run and walk um, alongside us, which is really fun. Of course, they're um, partners of ours. And uh, Dutchess County Sheriff's Department and the Arlington Fire Department, Town of Poughkeepsie Police, they will all be there. And so we get to run and walk alongside them. And that's September 14th. That's a Saturday. That's going to be at uh, 301 Manchester Cross. That's the Manchester Crossing Rail Trail right off of Route 55 in uh, Poughkeepsie, uh, right there by the Children's Medical Group building. And um, we'll have a lot of fun things there uh, for kids as well. Face painting. There'll be coffee. There'll be a food truck, um, music. And then we'll kick off on the rail trail and... uh, and do the 5K so people can run it, they can walk it, and or cheer us on. Some yeah. people don't do any of that. They grab their coffee and they uh, cheer loudly for us, and, and we appreciate that as well. So if they're just going to come out, that is free. If they want to compete and run, they uh, can sign up. It's $40. They can go call us or they can go right to our website, the CPCA. Dot org. They're going to see it right there on the uh, banner, and they can mm-hmm. click that and go through to the site and, and read more. So that's the 14th. And can I squeeze in also then yes. on the 15th, on that Sunday, we have Best of Beacon. And Best of Beacon is just that. We've got a walk and run that uh, goes through a nice scenic route there down by the uh, waterfront. Long Dock. Uh, Long Dock. That's also going to be at 9 a.m. in in Beacon, uh, hosted by Libby Funeral Home and um, State Farm. And there'll be refreshments and and prizes. So every child wins. Um, We usually always have a prize for children, and every child gets a medal, and there's lots of other great prizes. Uh, so it's tri- a, children can also register. The, yes. the, um, there is a child registration fee for $20. They get a yes. T-shirt. And, Very cool. Yeah. yeah, so we get a lot of track. It's fun. We get some track teams and cross country. So if your child's into um, running or your teen, um, I've got teenagers and my, my teens were running it. They can do that as well. So it's it's $20 for the children. It's four, only $40. So it's a great price point. And if you register quickly, that comes with a T-shirt, a goodie bag, a race bib. Um, so lots of fun things. No, I love it. I love it for a multitude of reasons. As you said, you can do it as a family. It gets everybody out there. That's mm-hmm. I, I love events that promote that. But then I also love what you're saying about like the um, Battle of the Badges, and you get to see people in law enforcement and you know the first responders. You kind of get to see them. Maybe they're wearing their uniform, but out of uniform, kind yes. of out and like as a person and really enjoying it because to some people, they're heroes. And it's like, oh, my God, they're out there with their heroes. But then to other people, the idea of law enforcement can be scary. So then mm-hmm. it humanizes them at the same time, yes. too. So there's both benefits mm-hmm. happening at the same time. And I think that's great. And then lastly, Beacon. Beacon is always so beautiful. So to be oh, able yeah. to take advantage of that, I think that's incredible. Yeah. So that is one too many, of course. But now could either one of you get into the pause and pours for prevention that's happening at Ben Morrow Winery? Yeah, and another another fun one in September. Uh, so lots going on in September. That's September 29th. That's at 11 a.m., 11 to 6. That's at Ben Marl Winery. And um, hosted by our friends, Compassion Veterinary, Stone Cottage Veterinary, um, and, of course, the Ben Marl Winery. But what's so special is Compassion Veterinary is also uh, Dr. Speccarelli there. Cares, My cousin-in-law. Ah, <laughs> yes. Cares for our service dog piece. 
So he really, um, that whole family and uh, the wonderful veterinary center there, they are heavily involved with our organization, making sure that Peace, um, you know, a service dog has certain needs, um, unique needs, and just making sure that his um, health is at an optimal level um, so he can provide for those kids. So they take care of Peace for us, and, and they're really hosting uh, this event that's coming up, the Paws and Pores for Prevention. We love that. Um, so they secured three bands, Circle 65, Pandemonium, and Follow Suit. Oh, great bands. Right? Terrific. I actually just played a <laughs> festival with a couple of those guys. Terrific. Yeah. So we're really excited to hear them. Um, this is overlooking the beautiful Hudson Valley River. I mean, you've seen the you know just scenic views there. Um, so we're excited. People again can bring their uh, children. They can bring their dogs. Peace um, will be there. Peace yeah. will be there. <laughs> so they can take a photo with Peace. They can stop by, see us, ask questions. Um, it is the oldest vineyard in America. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Actually, right. I didn't know in that a, either. In America. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, it's just they've got some really unique, special history there, um, known also for their wood-fired pizzas besides the great wine that they have. Yeah. Um, and, they, you know, they're very liberal with their tastings there. And, and um, so it's going to be a just a real fun time. And uh, we hope to see everybody out. It's $35. You know, that's the main entrance, and that will provide um, you with, the, you know, the tastings, refreshments, the bands, you know, the music. And then uh, designated drivers are $10, and, of course, children are free. Just so, going to be a wonderful time. We hope to see all your listeners out that day. Yeah. Now, that'd be terrific. And, of course, all links and information will be in the description of this episode, so you'll be able to find everything. You can register. You can get involved with all of those. And, of course, when you got pet-friendly events, why right. not? <laughs> Seriously. Yes. No, I think that's cool. Whether you have a pet of your own or you just want to appreciate everybody else's pets. Yeah. Amazing. So, yes. so good. <laughs> Again, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award winning public affairs and issues program. Speaking with Kate and Rachel from the CPCA Center for the Prevention of Child Abuse, they have a jam packed September, a lot of fives, their fifth annual One Too Many 5K for their. 50th anniversary. I think I got all the fives there. Yeah. Terrific. That's happening September 13th through 15th. They have a lot of things going on throughout that weekend. And then, of course, the Pause and Pours for Prevention at Ben Morrow Winery on September 29th. Again, everything is in the description of this episode. Now, guys, before we wrap up, is there any like last little nugget that people should know about, either about these events or about the programs that you guys offer? Just get to know us, get to know, uh, learn the warning signs of how a child, you know, needs help in in your neighborhood, in your community, Uh, being aware and and, um, having that in your toolkit um, is just so important to keeping kids safe in in our community and and come get to know us. Those, the more they get to know, the more they love. (laughs) Absolutely. Kate, do you have anything to add on? I think Rachel actually summarized that pretty perfectly. Just, yeah, having those tools to be able to recognize when a child needs your help and making sure that the children have those tools to recognize if something is not right in their life. Um, But get to know us. I mean, there's a lot of information we can provide for you and we have a lot of ways that you can get involved. Yeah, we're not here to judge. We're here to help. (laughs) That's actually a really big thing that you said there. I feel like so many people are always worried about judgment of whatever or Mm -mm. maybe even the people who are like, I feel like I could have done more. I could have done better. I should have done this, should have done that. It's like, you're doing the best with the situation that you got and the Mm -hmm. fact that you're looking for help. That says a lot. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. yeah, I, yes. I, I love that right there. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. I'm glad that you said that. We want families to stay. We want to keep families together. We want to support them. We have a parenting program. So we've seen it all, heard it all. There's nothing that will surprise us. We're there to help. And, of course, if you're needing help, you can go to the CPCA website and you can meet up with them in person at any of these events and see how beautiful and community-driven this whole thing is. Kate, Rachel, thank you guys so much for being here on this episode of In Touch. Thank you for having us. Of course. This has been this week's edition of In Touch, the award-winning public affairs and issues program that runs across Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley radio stations. We want to give a big thank you to Rachel and Kate. For more information, visit thecpca.org. Of course, all links and information can be found in the description of this episode. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just joined us, 
thank you. You can find In Touch episodes new and old on your favorite streaming services like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. That and listen on demand with your Town Square Radio Station mobile app. Of course, you can still find all articles and audio under the In Touch tab on this radio station's app and website. And don't forget, we're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at InTouch underscore HV. I've been your host, Connor Walsh. Until next time, stay curious, keep an open mind, and as always, I'm glad we get to spend some time. 